Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rose Free Church, uh, Sunday the 18th of September here. A couple housekeeping things quick before we get started. Uh, we've got uh, on the calendar, if you look in your bulletin, uh, those of you uh, that attend the youth group, uh, it's at Osweiler's tonight at 6.30. Wednesday, we've got cons- confirmation uh, is at Rose here on the 21st, uh, Wednesday. Friday the 23rd is Bruce's fall uh, sale, so uh, stop by over there, see what they've got uh, going on, and help support uh, Spruce. Uh, Take a look at the prayer list, Um, keep those people in mind with your prayers. Uh, We've also got, um, just ask that you pray for um, the call committee as we uh, continue to uh, try and get um, a pastor called. And, uh, and also for, for some of the coverage in the meantime that we'll be uh, taking on uh, from Sunday to Sunday to try and uh, keep things going here uh, with the church and, and over at Spruce as well. Um, any, any prayer requests to come in, uh, feel free to uh, email Haley is, is our secretary right now. And she, she encouraged either email her at just the, I believe at the church email, right? Otherwise, uh, under the prayer list, there's a, there's a thing here you can, you can check and either get to myself, one of the deacons, or just to Haley's little desk back there. Um, and then if I encourage anybody, if anyone's interested in, in serving the church here through reading scripture, I'm the, the person who coordinates that. Uh, just get a hold of me. We've got a lot of great scripture readers already, but I'm sure there's a lot of talented readers that are probably... Uh, no doubt better than better than me at reading, so that's a, a low bar. Anybody can do it. Um, hopefully, uh, people read, I don't know, once every couple months. So if that's something you're interested in, get a hold of me. Any, any other announcements or prayers that people have? All right, let's start with the opening prayer. O oh Lord, our maker, redeemer, and comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray that you will open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word, we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and in death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen. I'll invite everyone to stand for the opening hymn, a classic number uh, 510 in your hymnal, How Great Thou Art.
Continue now with our the confession of sin, the Apostles' Creed. Oh, I'm sorry. The confession of sin is uh, found on page two, or should be shown above here. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you, for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'll call on our scripture reader, John. Our uh, first reading is Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 24. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of this sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The acts of sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, adultery, 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 and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus has, have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Our second reading is Luke 
17, 11 to 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Thank you, John, for the reading. Let's continue now with um, the Confession of Faith, the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page four. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. Call upon the kids if uh, the kids want to come up for a children's message. So, 
Is everybody paying attention during the scripture reading? Can anyone tell me what, what happened with the story with Jesus when he was walking along? Who, uh, who came up to him? Who's that? Leopard men? Uh, what's a, what, what do uh, lepers, what, what do lepers have? Leprosy, there you go. Um, yeah, leprosy. What's, so leprosy is a skin disease that was common in Jesus' time, right? Um, we had, and he, they, they came up to him. How many, how many men was it? Ten. Ten, very good. Thank you for this. Ten men came up to him, and uh, he said, Teacher, please, please heal us. And he basically, um, in an instant, said, Go ahead, go back to the priest, show them, and uh, they look at themselves, and they realize they were they were healed, just like that, right? So what happened then? One man, yeah. Huh? Yeah, to thank him, right? So I brought I brought a couple things here. I do my good point. My wife has it in the drawer. What do you think these are? Anybody see what what's this look like? Monsters. Yeah, monsters. What what is it? Thank you, Target. Yeah, yeah. I've got that one's got monsters on it. How about this one? Pirates. Pirates. So it's it's the whole thing, Target. Um, is it? Yeah. What one guy out of all ten? They have a, a life changing disease that Jesus uh, heals them from instantly, and only one guy comes back. Now, does does Jesus say that we we have to say thank you to him for for the things that he does? No, not really. What? How about um, before you before you eat supper? Pray. You pray. Yeah, we say thanks, right? Does Does God say you have to give thanks? No. No. Do, do we have to pray before we before we eat? No. You know, does it sin if we don't? No, but we should be thankful for these things, right? What How about what other things has God done in our lives that we should be thankful for? Families. Families. Yeah. What do you think? Houses, right. food. 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 Yes, exactly. Um, lots of things. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, one more. Water. Water. Yes, we should be thankful for water. Um, so we should always be thankful. It's not something that's needed, but it's one of those good good bonus thing that everybody should just be thankful for um, and, and reflect that in actually giving thanks to people whether it's to God, to Jesus or to other people that do things for it. So let's uh, let's hold our hands and say a prayer of thanks here. Dear Lord, thank you for this Sunday, for opening day of Sunday school, all these uh, awesome little kids. But Lord, we thank you for all the things that you do for us, the things that we take for granted, the things that we often just don't appreciate. Help us to Appreciate those things and, and be thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. There, there will be candy. There definitely will be candy. <laughs> we'll do two pieces of candy for those kids that need a number. <laughs> Um, we're, uh, we're joined and blessed to have uh, Pastor Terry Olson here for the message, for giving the sermon, which we'll do after um, this next hymn. Let's join in singing hymn number uh, 193, My Jesus, I Love Thee.
Again, it's so good to be with you. It was a beautiful drive over with the sunshine, uh, sunrise, and I kept praying that the Lord would send his sun into and rise into our hearts so that we would feel the warmth of his grace and the light of his word today. Greetings from your sister congregation in uh, Grafton. I continue to serve there part-time, although lately I've been helping out. We have a lot of churches in our area that are without pastors, so I've been trying to help fill in in different places. So uh, just good to be with you. May God's blessings rest upon you as a congregation. Continue to pray for the uh, call committee and the congregation as they as you uh, pray for a shepherd. I'm going to read the Old Testament lesson. I'll be preaching on the gospel lesson, but this Old Testament lesson also uh, has the same cry, the same prayer. And uh, I'm going to have you stand as we read out of Jeremiah 17, verses 13 and 14. Jeremiah 17, verses 13 and 14. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Father, these are thy words. Sanctify us in thy truth, for thy word is everlasting truth. Amen. You may be seated. In the church or the congregation, we often talk about faith. And I suppose there are two definitions to faith. One is the body of beliefs that we have. That's our faith. But it's also the belief that we have in that truth as well. Well, what is the true and living faith? Is faith our attempt to believe? To really believe? To try our hardest to believe? And I think all of us think this way when we have tried to believe and failed. Especially when God sends trials and struggles into our lives. We often look back and we say, well, what do I believe? Well, I'm going to give you a definition for faith that comes from our catechism. And one thing I've learned over the years as I've gotten a little older is that I like to th make things more simple. Why? Because that's what I understand. Well, our catechism simply says a true and living faith is when a repentant sinner lays hold of Jesus Christ as his only Savior from sin, death, and the power of Satan, he takes refuge in Christ and his righteousness, and he builds upon Christ with the confidence of his whole heart. And I want you to keep that in mind because I'll refer to that toward the end. At the end of our text this morning from Luke 17, Jesus makes the statement to the one that returned to give thanks. Your faith has made you whole. Both in the Old Testament and New Testament, faith is extolled. It's lifted up. In Hebrews 11, faith is defined and described as 
as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And according to Hebrews 11, without faith, it is impossible, it is impossible to please him for he comes to for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and so it was for the 10 lepers they came to Jesus they stood afar off and that's understandable because because of their disease they were not to clo come close to any people so they stood afar off. And as we look at those and understand the, the, the disease that they had, leprosy, it ate away at a person's flesh. And spiritually speaking, leprosy re represents sin and how it eats away at our lives. The the leper was separated from people, was forced to live alone outside of the city, in fact. And it speaks of the way in which sin separates us from God and what he has for us. Now in Leviticus 14, it talks about how that leper might be cleansed and was to offer the blood of an animal. Well, when we come with our sin, we come asking for the cleansing of Jesus Christ in our lives and the blood that he shed on the cross to cleanse our hearts. And the blood of Christ cleanses, restores, and sets us apart in Christ. But I want us to focus on that last verse in our text today. Your faith has made you well. Well, I thought it was Jesus that made him well. Well, it was. But I'm going to share two points from our text today. Two marks of faith. That I trust will help us to understand what Jesus is saying here. First of all. Faith is known by the cry for mercy. What were they asking for? Jesus, have mercy on us. In Jeremiah 17, what was the cry of Jeremiah? Have mercy on us, save us. And in all reality, save us not only from our sin, but from ourselves as well. And here Jesus wishes to work in us a full confidence in him and to be sure that we shall in Christ have what we believe. David's cry for mercy in Psalm 51, have mercy upon me, O Lord according to thy loving kindness. Really, there is no faith without this cry for mercy. Let me re just repeat that. There is no faith without this cry for mercy. And because in this cry for mercy, we acknowledge two things, our helplessness and our guilt. We have nothing to offer. All we can do is to cry out for mercy. I was thinking of, of if I would have had a little children's lesson today, one little question I would have asked is, how many of you have a little brother or sister, a baby brother or sister? How many of you remember having a baby brother or sister? How did they ask for food? Oh, the, oh I'm, I'm sure they said, Mom, can I have something to eat now? How did they ask? They cried. Did they not cry? 
And that's how the mother knew that maybe it's time to, to give them some food. And so when we look at faith, we have to understand that the beginning of faith involves the cry for mercy. I think of King Hezekiah. He prayed after his illness and recovery in Isaiah 38. Beginning at verse 16, O Lord, by your word men live. I like the other thoughts that are in this text as well. And in all your word is the life of my spirit. O restore me to health and let me live. Lo, for my own welfare I had great bitterness. It is thou who hast kept my soul from the pit of nothingness. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. Now I'm going to make a couple statements here and I'm going to try to make them so that you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. I, if, I, if we believe that we have forgiveness of sins and eternal life in Christ. We shall have it. And I'm going to ask you why. Because God said it. I think of the cross and I think of what Jesus has done for us. And I, I just love the, I love the words of the cross. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. It is finished. And I am so grateful that he said that. As he died and gave his blood. So that we can be forgiven. I have it because he said it. If we believe that God will be gracious and merciful to us, for Jesus' sake, he will be gracious and merciful to us because he said it. I think of these ten lepers. God said, go to the priest. That's what he said. And that was according to the Old Testament law. That's what they were to do. But as they went, what took place? The healing took place. Because God said it, because Christ said it. Therefore, all depends upon what Jesus says. All depends upon what Jesus has done for us. And that's why it's so important for us that we would remember what Jesus has done on the cross. That's why we have the Lord's table. Do this in remembrance of me. Given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. But we must ask in faith, is it not? I think of James 1. Let him who asks in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. When the lepers came, they did not doubt. They came asking. They came believing. They came with the understanding that Jesus and Jesus alone could bring wholeness to their bodies. And as we come spiritually and we come with our sin and we come with the ugliness of our sin, how it's eaten away at us, and we hear Jesus say, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. We have it. I love little children because as I listened here, I didn't hear any, anybody raise their hand and say, but you know, I don't think that's true and here's why. 
Did you hear that? I didn't. God said it, and that was it. So the first mark is the cry for mercy. All right. The second mark is thankfulness. In Psalm 116, he calls it the sacrifice of thankfulness. Well, what's a sacrifice? Most of us would say, well, that's an animal that has been sacrificed or given. But I'm going to broaden the definition a little bit. A sacrifice is an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more worthy or more important or more valuable. And I can think of no greater example than Paul. Paul in Philippians 3. What things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for the sake of Jesus Christ. All right, what, what things were gained to him? What did he deem valuable? Well, his pedigree, who he was, his father, his mother, his family, the fact that he kept the law, the fact that he had studied the law, the fact that he had basically had it all right in comparison to a lot of others. But that which he called gain, he said, I now count it loss. For the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ, my Savior. That's quite a sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. I think of King Hezekiah again. And he continues in his prayer, For Sheol cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. It is the living who give thanks to you as I do today. A father tells his sons about your faithfulness. The Lord will surely save me. End of quote again. Is it not right that God should have the honor of our thankfulness for all of our benefits? I grew up in Winger, Minnesota, and I remember my confirmation time extremely well. I remember the, my confirmation day and standing at the altar. My confirmation pastor had me, as part of all of our memorization, had me memorize Psalm 103, the whole psalm. I didn't realize at that time how impactful that would be in my life. He knew. I didn't realize it. And maybe I didn't realize it until even now. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. And what's the first benefit that God reveals? Who forgives all my iniquities. Who redeems my life who heals my diseases, who restores me. A, th a sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. And the second mark of faith, because what is it? I mean, when Jesus looks at this one person, and you could say, well, what happened to the other nine? Well, that's another question. But you know something? We aren't exactly told what happened to the other nine. We are told what happened to the one. And when Jesus simply says, your faith has made you whole, I believe that at that time, not only in the cry of mercy, as he cried, as he cried for help, he also praised the God who gave him the mercy. 
the forgiveness of sins. Psalm 116 asks a few questions. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will praise and thank him for all his benefits. True faith is a blessing. The faith that cries out for mercy to the only source that can give it is truly a blessing. Coming in thankfulness to the giver who has given that mercy, that grace, that forgiveness, that salvation, that redemption, that eternal life is truly a blessing. For confidence is no longer in man, but in God alone, in Christ alone. This is the true and living faith. When a repentant sinner lays hold of Jesus Christ as his only savior from sin, death, and the power of Satan, and takes refuge in Christ and his righteousness, and builds upon Christ with the confidence of his whole heart. That's faith. That's faith that God has worked in our lives. That's faith that rests at the cross. That's faith that wants to look to what Jesus has said. That's faith that wants to hear what Christ has done for us. That's faith that Jesus, through the Spirit and Word, has created in our hearts. May God grant these two marks. And there are other marks. I'm not saying there are only two. These are the two that are revealed in our scripture for us today. But thanks be to God for the cry for mercy in our lives and for the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We've given up everything else and we can only say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. I'm in that era which sang that song. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Terry. Uh, join me now in singing hymn 507. My hope is built on nothing less.
join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I ask you to stand and receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.